light. They all hear me? Light. Light, I realized, is the display of love, the outward sign of inner devotion. You are the reason I know this. Its absence, I know now, is a sure sign of no hope in a relationship. I saw when I met you a light in your eyes and knew that everything that had gone before was a pale imitation. I can now spot imposters of love from a mile away and it's the lack of light in their eyes that betrays them. Man's land. When I was ten, or around about, a boy in the street called out to me. He called me No Man's Land. And I was horrified, of course, plus a little impressed, if I'm honest, at just how cutting and original the insult was. These days, though, it barely seems insulting at all. I guess I've just grown tired of boys in the street and what they think of me. And this one sounds like it has a dodgy title, but it, it's not supposed to be taken that way. Um, it's called Two Men and Me. <laughs> the only similarity that you both share is the impact you've had on my life. One of you made it bearable while the other tore it down some years apart. One I loved and did wrong by while they did not love but did right. The second whispered words of love, supposed love, complete with malice like poison. One I live in hope of, bumping into one day in the street. The other I die in dread of, fear that I may cross his path again. And yet, who would I be without either? And how can I regret a thing? I like who I am now, and they're a part of that. So this is uh, my last one, and it's called Tess. I'm scrolling through my photos when I come to one of Tess, my beloved companion of many years, and I have to stop myself from crying, from missing her, because I can't think about the fact that she's just 20 feet away, two feet under our lawn, and I can't think about how her mate can sit atop her bones and not know that she's there. I can't think about how he still looks for her, and how he's still waiting for her to run into the yard, even now. <laughs>